Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Son of God. Part 1 of 2 The Meaning of Son of God Description An examination of the concept that Jesus is the Son of God from Christian sources. The meaning of the term Son of God in the Old and New Testament. One of the most striking differences between a cat and a lie is that a cat has only nine lives. Mark Twain, Put in Head Wilson's Calendar. Son of God, Son of David, or Son of Man. Jesus is identified as Son of David 14 times in the New Testament, starting with the very first verse, Matthew 1 verse 1. The Gospel of Luke documents 41 generations between Jesus and David, while Matthew lists 26. Jesus, a distant descendant, can only wear the Son of David title metaphorically. But how then should we understand the title, Son of God? The Trilemma, a common proposal of Christian missionaries, states that Jesus was either a lunatic, a liar, or the Son of God, as he claimed to be. For the sake of argument, let's agree that Jesus was neither a lunatic nor a liar. Let's also agree he was precisely what he claimed to be. But what, exactly, was that? Jesus called himself Son of Man frequently, consistently, perhaps even emphatically, but where did he call himself Son of God? Let's back up. What does Son of God mean in the first place? No legitimate Christian sect suggests that God took a wife and had a child, and most certainly none conceived that God fathered a child through a human mother outside of marriage. Furthermore, to suggest that God physically mated with an element of his creation is so far beyond the limits of religious tolerance as to plummet down the sheer cliff of blasphemy. Chasing the mythology of the Greeks With no rational explanation available within the tenets of Christian doctrine, the only avenue for closure is to claim yet one more doctrinal mystery. Here is where the Muslim recalls the question posed in the Quran. How can he have a son when he has no consort? Quran 6 101 Yet the idolaters made the jinn partners with Allah in worship believing that the jinn can independently bring benefit and cause harm, whilst Allah alone had created them. So he is most worthy of being worshipped. And out of their ignorance they attributed sons to Allah, as the Jews did with respect to Yusair, and the Christians with respect to Jesus and also daughters. Allah is free and above what the people of falsehood claim about him. He, may he be glorified, is the creator of the heavens and the earth without any precedent. How can he have a child when he has no wife? He created everything and knows everything. Nothing is hidden from him. Alanam 100-101 While others shout, but God can do anything. The Islamic position, however, is that God doesn't do inappropriate things, only godly things. In the Islamic viewpoint, God's character is integral with his being and consistent with his majesty. So again, what does Son of God mean? And if Jesus Christ has exclusive rights to the term, why does the Bible record, For I, God, am a father to Israel, and Ephraim, i.e. Israel, is my firstborn, Jeremiah 31. 9, and, Israel is my son, even my firstborn, Exodus 4 verse 22. Taken in the context of Romans 8. 14, which reads, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, many scholars conclude that Son of God is metaphorical and, as with Christos, doesn't imply exclusivity. After all, the Oxford Dictionary of the Jewish Religion confirms that in Jewish idiom Son of God is clearly metaphorical. To quote, Son of God, term occasionally found in Jewish literature, biblical and post-biblical, but nowhere implying physical descent from the Godhead. Werblowski, R. J., Zwi and Jeffrey Wigeter. Page 653, Hastings Bible Dictionary Comments. In Semitic usage sonship is a conception somewhat loosely employed to denote moral rather than physical or metaphysical relationship. Thus sons of Belial, J.G. 1922 etc., are wicked men, not descendants of Belial, and in the NT the children of the bride chamber are wedding guests. So a son of God is a man, or even a people, who reflect the character of God. There is little evidence that the title was used in Jewish circles of the Messiah, and a sonship which implied more than a moral relationship would be contrary to Jewish monotheism. Hastings, James. Dictionary of the Bible. Page 143. And in any case, the list of candidates for Son of God begins with Adam, as per Luke 3 verse 38, Adam, which was the Son of God. Those who rebut by quoting Matthew 3. 
17, and suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, have overlooked the point that the Bible describes many people, Israel and Adam included. As sons of God. Both 2 Samuel 7 verses 13 to 14 and 1 Chronicles 22 verse 10 read, He, Solomon, shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. Entire nations are referred to as sons, or children of God. Examples include Genesis 6 verse 2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. Genesis 6 verse 4, there were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men. Deuteronomy 14 verse 1, ye are the children of the Lord your God. Job 1 verse 6, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Job 2 verse 1, again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Job 38 verse 7, when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Philippians 2 verse 15, that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. 1 John 3 verses 1 to 2, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Beloved, now we are children of God. In Matthew 5 verse 9 Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Later in Matthew 5. 45, Jesus prescribed to his followers the attainment of noble attributes, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Not exclusively his Father, but their Father. Jesus Christ, Son of God. Part 2 of Two Son or Slave Description, a look at the original Greek and Hebrew words translated to son. Christian clergy openly acknowledge that Jesus never called himself Son of God, however they claim that others did. This too has an answer. Investigating the manuscripts that make up the New Testament, one finds that the alleged sonship of Jesus is based upon the mistranslation of two Greek words, pious and huios. Both of which are translated as son. However, this translation appears disingenuous. The Greek word pious derives from the Hebrew ebed, which bears the primary meaning of servant or slave. Hence, the primary translation of pious theu is servant of God, with child or son of God being an extravagant embellishment. According to the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, the Hebrew original of pious in the phrase pious theu, i.e., ebed, carries a stress on personal relationship and has first the sense of slave. Kittle, Gerhard and Gerhard Friedrich. Page 763. This is all the more interesting because it dovetails perfectly with the prophecy of Isaiah 42 verse 1, upheld in Matthew 12 verse 18. Behold, my servant, i.e., from the Greek pious, whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. Whether a person reads the King James Version, New King James Version, New Revised Standard Version, or New International Version, the word is servant in all cases. Considering that the purpose of revelation is to make the truth of God clear, one might think this passage an unsightly mole on the face of the doctrine of divine sonship. After all, what better place for God to have declared Jesus his son? What better place to have said, Behold, my son whom I have begotten? But he didn't say that. For that matter, the doctrine lacks biblical support in the recorded words of both Jesus and God, and there is good reason to wonder why. Unless, that is, Jesus was nothing more than the servant of God this passage describes. Regarding the religious use of the word ebade, the term serves as an expression of humility used by the righteous before God. Kittle, Gerhard and Gerhard Friedrich. Page 763. Furthermore, after 100 BC Pius the more often means servant of God, as when applied to Moses, the prophets, or the three children, Bar. 120, 220, Dan 935. Kittle, Gerhard and Gerhard Friedrich. Page 765. A person can easily get into doctrinal quicksand, of eight instances of this phrase, one refers to Israel, LK. 154, 2 refer to David, Luke 1 verse 69, Acts 4 verse 25, and the other 5 to Jesus, M.T. 12 18, Acts 3 verses 13 and 26, 4 27, 30. In the few instances in which Jesus is called pious the we obviously have early tradition. Kittle, Gerhard and Gerhard Friedrich. Page 767. So Jesus did not have exclusive rights to this term, and where it was employed the term obviously stemmed from early tradition. 
Furthermore, the translation, if impartial, should identify all individuals to whom the phrase was applied in similar manner. Such, however, has not been the case. Whereas Pius has been translated servant in reference to David, Acts 4 verse 25 and Luke 1 verse 69, and Israel, Luke 1 verse 54, it is translated son or holy child in reference to Jesus, Acts 3 verse 13, 3 verse 26, 4 verse 27. 430. Such preferential treatment is canonically consistent, but logically flawed. Lastly and interesting, if not key, religious parallel is uncovered. Thus the Greek phrase pious to Theu, servant of God, has exactly the same connotation as the Muslim name Abdullah, the servant of Allah. Carmichael, Joel. pp 255-6. The symmetry is all the more shocking, for the Holy Quran relates Jesus as having identified himself as just this, Abdullah, ABD being Arabic for slave or servant. Abd Allah, also spelled Abdullah, meaning slave or servant of Allah. According to the story, when Mary returned to her family with the newborn Jesus, they accused her of being unchaste. Speaking from the cradle in a miracle that gave credence to his claims, baby Jesus defended his mother's virtue with the words, Ini Abdullah, which means, I am indeed a servant of Allah. TMQ 1930 Translation of the New Testament Greek huios to son, in the literal meaning of the word, is similarly flawed. On page 1210 of Kittle and Friedrich's Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, the meaning of huios journeys from the literal, Jesus the son of Mary. To mildly metaphorical, believers as sons of the king, Matt. 17,25-26, to politely metaphorical, God's elect being sons of Abraham, Luke 19 verse 9, to colloquially metaphorical, believers as God's sons, Matt. 7 colon 9 and Heb 12 colon 5, to spiritually metaphorical, students as sons of the Pharisees, Matt. 1227, Acts 23 verse 6, to biologically metaphorical, as in John 19 verse 26, where Jesus describes his favorite disciple to Mary as her son, to blindingly metaphorical as sons of the kingdom, Matt. 812, Sons of Peace, Luke. 10 colon 6, Sons of Light, Luke. 16 colon 8, and of everything from sons of this world, Luke 16 verse 8, to sons of thunder, Mark 3 verse 17. It is as if this misunderstood word for son is waving a big sign on which is painted in bold letters, metaphor. Or, as Stanton eloquently puts it, most scholars agree that the Aramaic or Hebrew word behind son is servant. So as the Spirit descends on Jesus at his baptism. Jesus is addressed by the voice from heaven in terms of Isaiah 42 verse 1, Behold my servant. My chosen. I have put my spirit upon him. So although Mark 1 verse 11 and 9. 7 affirm that Jesus is called by God to a special messianic task, the emphasis is on Jesus' role as the anointed servant, rather than as son of God. Stanton, Graham N., page 225.